Welcome to the shooting show. This week it's a Jeff Garrett double bill as we head down to Essex and follow Jeff pigeon decoying and then out after the muntjac from the high seat. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Right, well, we're on a day's pigeon shooting on the only bit of drilled barley that I've got going in. Um, not too sure what the outcome's going to be because, as I said previously, um, I mean, in actual fact, I'm thinking about writing to my local MP to see whether Brexit has um, affected the pigeons because we just haven't got any in this area at the moment. Um, I've been watching this field now for two or three days. There's a sprinkling over it, but not the numbers that we've normally been used to. So, just a matter now of... And there's a few actually on the headland there, just down there. In actual fact, they're right. There's a few down there. Um, just sit here and watch. I'm thinking about going along this bottom headland anyway. Um, but I really, really don't know what's happened to the pigeons. Um, around this area because we just haven't got them but we're going to give it a go see what happens and see if we can get a few shots you got a bit of a hide built already <clears throat> yeah i mean because because obviously i know the area there's a few coming over the motorway here now so you know it, it's not a complete dead loss um but yeah i mean i watched this yesterday um and knowing the ground like i do um, they do tend to come over here, swing up there underneath the pylons. There's a few there. Uh, yeah, there's a few there going in there. So uh, I've got a hide down here. Um, and we're just literally going to go and I put some fur bells there ready to put in the hide. Um, put the net up and then we'll just see what happens. Well, we've got the hide built, nice hide. Um, stands out a little bit because we're on a, just a couple of stubby bits of hedge.
enforcer decoys are out there. It's uh, just a matter of waiting. I just, just haven't got any confidence in today. Um, there's been a one or two go over, absolutely miles high, just gone straight over the top of us. Um, so I think it's going to be a long old haul today, and we just have to see what we get at the end of it. Um, you know, like I say, we just lack of pigeons in this area for whatever reason. Uh, it's very depressing, but there we go. There's a few on this morning though, yeah? Yeah, there was a few here, you know, a few when we got to the field, but, you know, that is only a few compared to other years, you know. So, so like I say, it's just, we've got to sit it out till three, four o'clock this afternoon and see what, what, what the day brings. There's not a lot of wind though, is there? No, but it's, it's sort of blowing slightly that way, so just need to... One coming in here. Two coming, they're all coming in. One here, look, here, look, here. Yeah, here. yeah. There's one behind as well. Yeah. I tell you, we've definitely got the wind right now. I caught, I caught that with my head. Did you? Oh, well, good shot. Yeah, yeah. We're just off now to uh, have a go at the monk jack. Um, my intentions for the day was to have a go at the pigeons, um, and we got set up about ten o'clock and that just proved to be an absolute non-starter. Um, pigeons are not in the area, and what few we have got here just came over us a million miles up in the air. I did get three or four to decoy in, um, but it was very clear that that was just not gonna happen. So uh, we've, I've abandoned plans on the pigeon shooting, um, and now um, I've got a couple of guys down, come down anyway, I was gonna meet them this afternoon, uh, to just help me on the monk jack cull. So I've decided to swap the shotgun for a rifle. I'm now off to go and sit in a wood and see if we can get, you know, sort of three or four more monk jack just to help the uh, the final part of the monk jack cull.
that's another uh, dough down, um, nice dough. Um, we just had a little spate there. There was a one at the back there, which I'm sure was a buck, probably about 150 yards up there. And there was a little doe to the left of the ride, which just disappeared to the left. And this one here, I thought I saw it early on mooching about round the side here, and then literally a couple of seconds ago it just walked out across the ride, did a little whistle to stop it, bush hopefully it's gone straight through the, uh, through the heart area. So we'll just go and pick it up now, and um, with the one I've got early on, get them down the chiller, get them sorted. Well, there's another one uh, for the coal this year. Uh, nice mature doe. Um, had youngsters with it, but they were big enough that we know they're going to go away and be out of fend for themselves. Um, all I could see behind a, the tree was a, the top half, you know, the, the, the neck upwards. Um, fairly confident when we rifle to take the neck shot. As you can see, job's done. Off we go Distance, to the larder. To be fair. Distance. 40 yards. 40 yards. Yeah. So, you know, well comfortable in doing it. I wouldn't do that sort of shot at 100 yards, but at that distance when you're sitting on a high seat, you know, I was well comfortable with doing it. That is a big doe. Not too bad, maybe a little bit, a little bit high. No, it's not bad. And what do you think of the Excite? Yeah, it's a nice, nice set of scopes. Um, nice to look through, nice to shoot. So I am sort of thinking about that sort of vision for a new yeah. rifle setup. So that's just given me a lot of food for thought on that sort of thing. So yeah, results there. Happy man. Second one, job done then? Yeah, second one this afternoon. So we've shot a couple of does now. So, you know, like I say, it all just goes to that that, that final figure for the Monk Jack Cull. Um, we'll get this one back with the other one, get it sorted out in the chiller, and then go and see what the other guys have got. Jeff there, for once failing on the pigeons, but making up for it with the Munt Jack. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. This week we report from Ewa in Nuremberg. It's the biggest trade show in all of Europe for hunting, shooting and field sports. Taking place over 10 massive halls, Ewa was bigger and busier than ever. Here's our roundup of everything taking place at the show. Brits had a big presence at the show. David Thompson of Ely Hawk gave us a flavour of the atmosphere. We're, we're absolutely blown away by the reaction from shooters, from the press and from the trade. They're all going, when can we have some? When can I order it? When is it going to be available? Um, what price it is? And nobody's gone, that's too expensive. Everybody's going, yep, the price is worth paying for what you're offering. It's, it's certainly going to be what we need for the future of the sport. We just had visitor after visitor from the trade, from the press, um, talking to us about it, understanding more and going, this is a real game changer for us. And, you know, suddenly the pennies were dropping on what this really means for the future of the sport. And for us, I think, given that we've, we didn't expect such a positive reaction at all, we didn't know how much it would really spark people's attention, but we were overwhelmed, to be honest. Then we checked out the major gun launchers at the show. First, a distinctly European rifle from Blaza. Step one in the new K95 saga, we've been making this rifle for quite some time, but now in its uh, newest form in the in the carbon version with an adjustable comb and butt pad. For me this is truly exciting. 
the reason I believe that why brake actions in the UK aren't really that popular because they were all wooden stocked and the UK sort of always led the way in terms of synthetic rifles, um, stainless look with moderators and it never went together. The stainless with the, with the classic look of the K K95 with a moderator. So now what we've got is an ultra modern version of a classic rifle. Single shot, brake action, it pretty much works and takes apart like a shotgun. But now we've got it with a carbon stock and adjustable cheek piece and adjustable butt pad. Those two are optional extras, but it's got a total weight of about 2.2 kilos, which is merely more than a wand. Ruger showed us their new precision rimfire, which is now available in 17HMR. In 2018, Ruger introduced the precision rimfire series in 22 long, long rifle only. For 2019, we developed a little larger chassis that is for the 17 HMR and or 22 Magnum. This gun is uh, chambered in 17. It's threaded muzzle uh, for uh, the UK. We will do it in half 20 thread. Uh, it has the Magpul uh, M-Lock uh, rail system, so you can put any accessories on it you like. Uses traditional uh, Ruger uh, BX series magazines. In this case, uh, this is a high capacity magazine, 15 rounds. We also do them in nine rounds. Um, it's got the adjustable marksman trigger. So it's a very, uh, very crisp and clean light trigger pull. Great for varmint hunting, uh, small game, that kind of thing. Um, with this gun, with the adjustability of the stock for both length and uh, the cheek rest up and down, it gives you uh, the ability to fit just about any shooter um, and for that purpose, you know, you can use it for younger people, tall, short, whatever. Works out very well. Breda's new over and under was turning heads and we got a first look. You know, Breda, after many years, decided to reproduce the over and under. You know, Breda produced many years ago one over and under called Sirio and was uh, quite famous in Europe and in Italy. This new generation of Overhander is, is born with uh, some idea, you know, be competitive in the serious sporting clay market. And uh, we designed a gun with a very low profile. We designed a gun uh, with, uh, as you can see, a very elegant design. We have a fantastic new generation of ejector that you can very easily replace in your gun you can see from here. So if you are in one competition and for some reason you need to replace one ejector, you can do it in one second or less than one second. You have a seven position trigger. The trigger is fully adjustable with two screws. You can adjust the play and the travel. And the seals are adjustable, so also the weight of the trigger is adjustable. We have a very, very long aiming area that will bring the rib near to your face so will be very very nice and comfortable to aim this gun once you are in a competition you you will see only a flat line Browning was as busy as ever with new guns and ammunition to show us big game hunters already know the winchester extreme point so just to remind you the purpose behind the winchester extreme point ammunition is a bigger tip for a bigger impact so when you look at the tip of the bullet it's 48 percent of the total diameter of the bullet, so it's really huge. And just to make, uh, to give you an example, an image, it's like when you hit a glass with your finger or with your fist. If you hit it with your finger, you will break a finger. If you hit it with your fist, you will break the window. So this year, Winchester Ammunition is really proud to launch a lead-free version of its uh, famous Winchester Extreme Point, the Extreme Point Copper Impact. It's growing more and more, and not only because it's a nice substitute to lead, because you know that lead it's not as trendy as before, but also because it offers extreme uh, performances. So when we talk about the Winchester Extreme Point Copper Impact, you must know that it's a monolithic bullet, 100% uh, copper. So it guarantees you a deep penetration inside the game, whatever it is. It can be a red stack, can be a strong wild bar. Okay, I know you don't have wild bars or not many in the UK, but it can be a red stack in the Scottish, uh, Scottish mountains and you make sure also that uh, the bullet will have an exit hole, so just in case the animal is not immediately killed, you can track it. We launched the SX-4 in gauge 12 uh, two years ago, 
and he got immediately the award of the fastest semi-auto shotgun in, uh, in the market, on the market. And this year we are really proud to launch a 20 gauge version of this uh, shotgun. So for the moment, uh, two versions available. You see the composite one here. We have also the camo one there and the field version, so a wood version will follow in the next months. But I will say that this semi-auto shotgun 20, 20 gauge is even faster than the 12 gauge because we have added an extra feature, an exclusive technology, the speed loading system. The speed loading is when you open the chamber, you want to reload, you insert the first cartridge inside, and if you push on the small metallic piece inside with the cartridge, it will go directly in the chamber and the chamber will close by itself. So you spare time, you save time, and you can focus on what does really matter, the game. Thermal imaging is one of the fastest growing areas in shooting and we spotted two new thermals at Iwa. First, ATN's Mars. So this is the brand new Mars 4 model. It's come on quite a way since the Mars 2 model. We've got a different body design now. Um, it's also the same as the 4K. It looks a lot more like a traditional optic. It sits on 30mm rings um, as opposed to the old Picatinny mount. The batteries are built in so you've got 18 hours battery life. You've also still got the same features as before with the video streaming feature. Uh, you've got the recoil activated video in there also. We still do the four lens sizes on the thermals. Um, they start from the 19mm and then this is the largest which is the 75mm model. And again we do the 384 um, and the 640 uh, sensors also in there. We manufacture all the thermals in the UK, uh, which obviously makes things uh, a lot easier with regards to sending them out to the different countries. Um, they're a lot quicker to make than the Mars 2 models. Uh, the manufacturing time on them has gone from an hour to less than 15 minutes now to put one of these together. And second, the new generation of the LTO Tracker Thermal from Leopold. Now last year we came out with the LTO Tracker HD, very popular little thermal imaging camera. What you're looking at here is the LTO Tracker 2 HD, an enhanced model that's got a lot of really neat features and we think we're going to make it a real hot in-demand item for 2019. You're getting a 390 by 390 uh, pixel display on your screen. You're getting an, you know, a little bit of enhanced camera that's a little bit sharper, a little bit sharper resolution than the original tracker. You're getting a thermal imaging camera that can read anything between negative 40 and 572 degrees Fahrenheit, of course. Uh, we've got six color palettes on here, so you can flip through based on what, uh, what's working best for your eye or the conditions that you're in. But the real key new feature is what we're calling beacon mode. Now the original LTO Tracker HD, excellent low light conditions, maybe excellent at night if you can hunt during those hours. It got a little bit tough during mid, you know, midday. You get to about you know, 11, noon, you're looking at rocks getting warm, uh, stumps picking up heat. The new beacon mode allows you to recalibrate the temperature that your camera is going to read. So if you were to say point it at a rock at 12 o'clock that's starting to reflect sunlight, you activate beacon mode, it will only show you heat that's reading warmer than that. Animals obviously are always going to read warmer than a lukewarm rock or stone. Very neat new feature that's designed to extend the usability hours of the LTO Tracker 2 HD. Swazi collected their apparel trophy from the Great British Shooting Awards at the show. We grabbed a few words with Davey Hughes. And it's one of the first times I've, uh, I've actually been struggling for words, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, it's a fairly weighty award, but more than the weight of the award, it's, it's the people behind it. For me, that's the, that's the people on my team, and it's um, also the people that voted for us. And new garments that we'll be releasing this year, they, they begin rolling off the production line in uh, April, May, there's uh, an ultralight tarp. We've been trialling it for three years in some of the world's you know, most extreme weather conditions and I'm, I'm absolutely wrapped in it. Finally, news from a different show entirely. The British Shooting Show said it will hold an extra show in Liverpool next year. We've got some exciting news, which we wanted to let everybody know while we're here. Um, I can't think of a better place to announce that than EU Outdoor Classics. Um, and the news is that we've got another show starting. Uh, next year, 2020, uh, we're going to have a second shooting show uh, at the Liverpool. We've got uh, dates in mind, uh, it's going to be August and September. Uh, we'll be more specific a little nearer the time, uh, but it will definitely be those two months. Really, the, the British shooting show was shaped because of the industry, from the industry, from what we hear. Uh, we've been hearing for quite a while that another venue, uh, another show, a little bit later in the year, uh, would be a good idea. A lot of the industry wanted it. Um, 
we looked into it uh, and came up with Liverpool. So we've put all those things firmly in place now. Uh, it's always industry-led. Whatever we do with the British Union show, uh, we're there to really to serve the industry. Just like Birmingham, uh, you've got John Lennon Airport, uh, excellent rail links, and you've got a ferry port. Um, ideal, ideal venue. That's a wrap from Ewa. We'll be back next year. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after you, looking after your sport. This has been The Shooting Show.